right guys here we go this is a pretty rad day cab for my buddy Bob Berger out of California we've called this we're calling this truck blue collar Absolutely. right it's a, a blue collar worker so there is a lot to this truck and you know uh, parts challenges have made this one go a little bit longer than what we wanted to go and uh, but this thing just turned out sweet so uh, this is a Bob Berger Mad Dog creation. So Mad Dog in our body shop was the one who put everything together on this one here. This is a 2022 389. This is a transfer dump chassis. And I wish I could get on an airplane and come out and see this thing completely done. So Bob's gonna send me some pictures and then maybe I'll put like a part two montage together or something. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, so. We're keeping this color a little bit proprietary to Bob because we worked really hard on picking colors, didn't we? <laughs> yes, we did. Yes. Uh, we did. We went with flats because there's just not enough flats out there as far as, uh, you know, you see mostly metallic out there. And so this one is, uh, is pretty sweet. So let me talk to you a little bit about the options on this one. And I'll tell you in the video, right now it is definitely not translating to uh, the true color of this truck but it is a gorgeous color. And uh, we have a lot of smoke haze here in Colorado. Our annual forest fires have officially kicked off into high gear, unfortunately. So real quick, um, we'll start at the front. We added some grill bars here. Nice little modification, right? And then we added the blackout trucks lights. These are the high definition lights. When you turn on your turn signal, this LED will turn to an amber, and then this one will blink as well. So one of the things that you'll notice about this particular light is it's not going to be a full-time running light on the edge. So what Bob had Mad Dog do is add a couple uh, corner lights just for corner markers. Makes it look pretty sweet. And then up top, Um, this is the first two-tone visor that I've that we've done and you can see that we did the smoked out top lights and if you look at the visor how the line so from the factory we just did the top cap black and then we were really struggling with the visor huh Bob yes we were <laughs> and we, uh, number one parts availability was was creating the biggest challenge for us on this one here um, just lack of parts lack of availability and so um, we, I went ahead just on faith and just kind of blindly ordered one from 12 gauge because they had one available and they could ship it overnight. And so we had this one brought in. So um, one of the advantages to this style is as you can see, there's no mirror brackets between the corner, the corner A pillars and the center of the windshield. So if you need to get a squeegee up in there, you can actually replace your windshields. Uh, without having to take those off. You might have to loosen up the center bracket from what I'm told. And then, um, of course, we added the two top lights, make it seven. And then Mad Dog did a chop on the air cleaners, which I'll show you a perspective. It makes the hood look longer. It's a little bit of an optical illusion. It's where you can see the top of the hood a little bit better. Then we went with the Phoenix shine back lights, painted them blue. And those, these boxes are gonna look so good on here. And then we did what, these are called the FX panels. And they're a little bit off right now because the airbags are dropped. Got the three bell Grand General train horn. Now, one of the things that caught us a little bit off guard but became actually a good deal is on this truck because of the way he has to go on job sites we had to raise the step box up and so it'll raise it up two inches now one of the initial sacrifices we didn't fully understand right away was that we were going to lose the air tank so there is no air tank back behind here but because the step box is there with a six inch drop panel i think it i think it really Perfect. turned out nice Perfect. so Then he went with the full Dynaflex 7 inch kit with the DPF move. So Mad Dog had to do a trim on the other side. 
we'll talk about that a little bit. A little bit of an interruption there, so um, we went with the straight cut, straight, straight cut seven inch pipes on this one here. You can see the sun coming out, and Bob wanted his tanks painted weld to weld. And these are raised up so you can see from the factory how the brackets are higher. And then we painted a stripe on the def tank, or, or left an omission in the center of the def tank. 11R, I'm sorry, 295. 75R22.5 Bridgestones with the Alcoa Level 1s. This truck came in at what, 16.1, Bob? That's correct, 16.1. 16.1. And then, of course, we put all the provisions back here for your transfer dump, your bump kill switch. And then we painted this one. We did a split tank, weld to weld. a little bit of an angle on the back sleeper lights which turned out pretty cool so we, we can't remember we think we did 355s on this truck <laughs> and it does have interaxle lock not full lockers and then real quick here um, we put a dump valve on the front so let me talk about that real quick and I want to talk about the hidden hood latches so you can see no hood latches there um, these are provided by 12 gauge so let me talk about those real fast so when you do a DPF move, when you're doing the full Dynaflex kit with the Y-pipes still hooked up, so both stacks are still fully functional, um, this piece has to be trimmed because the DPF has moved forward. And so that's the kit that Dynaflex provides. And just so you know, um, there's another vendor coming on the market that I'm pretty excited about that's going to be doing some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, exhaust stuff. So. Anyway, so here's your dump valve. Um, these are just standard rear end Haldex dump valves right there, okay? And then this is the mounting bracket for the 12 gauge hidden hood latch for the bottom side. So you have to reach under and get a good feel for, for what it is. I know a lot of guys have been asking me um, to do that. And then you can see up here, there's the, the bracket that holds them up on the top. So, so it's nice when the hood comes down, it doesn't interfere um, typically in there, but um, and when you have these hood latches like this, you're going to see a little bit more movement in the hood, like when you're going through gutters and stuff. That's one thing that I notice when I'm driving it. So, so I'm going to try to do this on video, see if you guys can see, but you, you literally have to just reach down here and feel, and then you can feel it going in into place. That's how you latch the hood. And you'll definitely know if it's not latched because it'll come open when you hit your brakes. And that's not a good thing. So you always have to double check and make sure. So, very cool truck. I'm super proud of it. Bob is super proud of it. I think you made some awesome choices on this. So, all right guys. Let me do a little bit on the inside and then uh, we'll say goodbye to Bob and let him drive out of here. We did some really cool details in here on the inside of the visor. I'll show you. 14 gauges on this one. Um, a lot of questions about the general air gauge. Okay, um, that gauge is not hooked up. It's it's just to fill a spot. Now you can use it um, or take it out and put. Uh, some guys have even been putting pyrometers back into the trucks. I've had a, a guy on a 579 who was able to do it, and it looked uh, pretty clean. Down here we have uh, his front suspension dump. All the switches and everything that the upfitter needs. Lots of spare switches. Congratulations, Bob. Looks awesome. So we did the window chops painted on the back sides. And again, this is a 12 gauge visor. 
you guys who ask about 12 gauge visors, the mounting bracket is on the center of the window, window pillar. There are no brackets here. The benefit to that is, is you can see, um, and I'll show you from earlier in the video, I showed you from the outside where you can get a squeegee up underneath there. So, sear seats, again, it's 18 speed manual. And so this is Bob Berger's truck. Congratulations, Bob. Sure appreciate you. If you guys like these videos, click on the button in the bottom right hand corner and subscribe. Give Bob a big thumbs up and congratulations. And we'll talk to you all soon. Stay safe, everybody.